Today we're going to do an acid-base titration. A titration is a procedure for determining the volume of two solutions, acid and base, that will exactly neutralize one another by using the, the concentration of a standard or known solution the concentration of the other solution can be determined. So the titration apparatus will look like this. The titrant will be in the burette and the whatever we're analyzing will be, be in our Erlenmeyer flask. The titrant is a uh, solution added to the burette. The equivalence point is when your moles of acid is equal to your moles of base. The indicator is what's generally added to the solution to receive a change in color when the reaction's over. And the end point of the titration is when the indicator changes color. There are three types of acid-base titrations, and the type in which we're going to concentrate today is the weak acid, strong base titration. First, I would like to look at the titration curve of a strong acid, strong base titration. We've already done this. Now you see a couple of points for this. One is it starts off at a low pH, and the equivalence point is exactly at 7. This is only for a strong acid and strong base titration. Today we're going to do a weak acid strong base titration. Its pH is not going to start off as low. It will generally be above 1. And the equivalence point is going to be basic. So if you look at this equivalence point here, notice it's above 7. So the equivalence point is going to be basic. Now the reason for this is what you start with. Beginning here, you're starting with HA, major species besides water. And this is at the very beginning. And at the equivalence point, you've changed all of HA to what we call A-. minus. And A- minus is a conjugate base, reacts with water, pulls off the proton, leaves a hydroxide, and so that's why it's above 7 and basic at equivalence point for this type of titration. There are four types of calculations that are done when you do a titration of a weak acid and a strong base. So there are really four types of calculations. Of these four, only one that we're doing today is completely new. So let's look at these four types. The first type is at the very beginning, and we alluded to that. That is when you have the major species HA, and that is when you're using a Ka. So the very beginning of a weak acid uh, base titration before you've added any base is a Ka. The part that is new is what we're going to work on today is after you, the very beginning when you start to add hydroxide up until the equivalence point. So that's going to be a special type of calculation. We're going to spend a lot of time on that today on the video and also in class. At the equivalence point, when you get there, all of your HA has now been changed to A-. And this is a different type of calculation in that it's just one more step required, and this is a KB, and we've done these before. So this is not completely new. So when you get the equivalence point, you have KB. So first we have KA. The second type is a new type of calculation where we, you have what we call buffer, where you have HA and A-. Then at the, equivalence, at the equivalence point, you've changed all your HA to A minus and it's a KB. Then finally, after the equivalence point, the major species at that point is going to be hydroxide. So when it's basic, you, you use a formula for calculating the pH when you have extra hydroxide. So we're going to go through each one of these today. First, the problem we're going to do is calculate the pH when the following quantities of sodium hydroxide, a strong base, have been added to our weak acid of acetic acid. We want to know what it is initially, what it is after we add 10, 20 and 49 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Then what is it when you've added 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? And then finally, what is it when you've added 51 milliliters? Now let's look at how there are four types of problems. The first type is a Ka. The first type is a Ka, and we've done these before. And this is because your major species at the very beginning are going to be HA and also water. So the very beginning this is a type of calculation we've already done multiple times. It's just going to be HA and water. Now, these are going to be new. Up until the equivalence point, B, C, and D, and anything up to 50, after 0, up to 50, it's going to be the special type of calculation we're going to do today. So I'll just call that number 2. The third type of calculation is when you use a what we call a KB. In this, all the HA that we've started with, our weak acid, has been reacted. We've changed exactly the amount of HA now to A-. minus. Now, we're going to go over this, but A minus, when it reacts with water, it's a weak conjugate base. And that conjugate base will react with water and produce hydroxide. So for that reason, we're going to be using a KB. So when we get to the equivalence point, that's and notice the equivalence point is actually reached at the same volume. It doesn't matter if it's a weak acid or a strong acid. It's going to have exactly the same equivalence point. But at this point, we're going to use a KB. So let's add a B to this. Then finally, so that's a third type. The fourth, so this is third type. And then the fourth type is like an F. This is a fourth type right here. 
And this is when you have, at the end, you're just going to have extra hydroxide. So you've, you've gone past the equivalence point, you've added extra hydroxide. And that's pretty simple because at that point, we just use the formula pOH is equal to minus the log equal to minus, that should be minus log of the hydroxide concentration. And so this is what you use at the fourth type. So we have the four different types. So let's get started. First type. So if you have HA in water, this is a reaction. Your major species is going to be HA in water. So you can write it this way. You can say HA plus water gives you hydronium plus an A minus. Initial amounts. Now for this, I'm actually going to use molarity. I'm going to use the molarity of the HA. And then I have the, no A minus and, and, and pro protons to start. HA goes down by X. H, the proton and the conjugate base go up by plus x. So at the end, you have 0.1 minus x is e and x and x. And then you say Ka is equal to x squared over 0.1 minus x, and I believe the Ka for this is 1.8 times 7 to the minus 5. And from that point, it should be easy for you to solve for the pH. Okay, well, let's do the next type. Now, this is a type that I said is new, and this is when you're past the beginning and up to the equivalence point. So this is the type of calculation used for all of those. So the, the major species this time are going to be HA, hydroxide, water, and that's really it. Now, of course, there's also sodium in there, which does not react. Anytime you have a strong acid or strong base, they are going to go in there and to react. If there's a strong base and there's something that's going to react with an acid, it's going to pull out that proton. So the reaction for this is going to be our weak acid plus a strong base that we're adding for the burette. And at the end, it's going to pull off a proton. You're going to end up with A minus. And water. Now, A minus represents whatever that weak acid that hydrogen is attached to. In that's, this case, A minus equals an acetate ion. And so the reaction, we'd say we have 5 millimoles. So to get that, what I did is I multiplied the 50. Uh, I think in the question, we have 50 milliliters of acetic acid times a 0.1 molar acetic acid. And then at this point, I've used 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So I multi multiply the 10 milliliters times the 0.1, I have 1. So 5 and 1. And you can see at this point, the limiting reactant is going to be hydroxide. So the change is uh, the weak acid and the uh, strong base go down by uh, 1, and then the conjugate base increases by 1. At the end, we have a ratio of 4 weak acids to 1 conjugate base. So how do you solve from this point? From this point, we're going to use a different type of problem we've done before. We're going to use, this is a formula, pH equals P K pKa plus a log of A minus over HA. Now, how do you solve a pKa, you're asking yourself? Well, pKa is simply the log of the Ka. So the way this would work, you'd say pH is equal to 4.745. I got that by going minus log 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. I have 4, so that's a pKa, plus a log of 1 fourth. So when I put all this together, now let's go back for a second, think about what we expect this to do. Do you think this would be more acidic or more basic. Now, if you go back to the question, we have more HA than we have A minus. So instead of being more, uh, you, th you would think it would be a lower number because you have more acid than you have base. And when you actually solve that, you actually find out the pH is 4.137. So the final answer after you had 10, mil 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide is 4.137. And there's two more examples that go with this problem, you can go and work that, those out as well. Now let's look at the next one. Let's say we add, the, we got the reaction, but this time we're actually at the equivalence point. We've added exactly the same number of moles of base that we have of acid. So to do that, we've added 5 and 5, but at the end, we up, uh, the, the A minus goes up by 5. So the weak acid conjugate base, exactly the perfect ratio, go down by 5, A minus goes up by 5. Well, what happens at the end? The weak acid and conjugate base are now 0, A minus is 5. Now, what we use for this is solving a KB. One thing to keep in mind when you're solving these, anytime you do a KA, a KB, or the OH at the end, you have to change, go from moles or millimoles back to concentration, which you need, means you need to divide the number of moles by the total volume in liters or milliliters. Liters if you're using moles, milliliters if you're using millimoles. So let's do that. So to get the KB, we first need to calculate that. We divide the KW times the KA. We get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And then to get the A minus, we div div uh, divide the millimoles of the A minus by 
the milliliters of the entire solution. We get 0.05. Now we can plug those into our formula. And so now, same reaction, but what we're going to do now is plug in those numbers. So we said we started with the reaction now is different. Because at this point, you have different major species. Every bit of HA is gone, and every bit of the sodium hydroxide is gone. So now we're the major species. We have the ones that aren't listed here. We have sodium. Sodium doesn't react. We have, um, at this point, all the HA is gone, so there's really no HA left. And then we also, so it's just the only reaction that can happen is the weak conjugate base plus the water. So at this point, what happens is they go down by X, and the HA and the hydroxide go up by X. And so at the equilibrium, we're going to have 0.05 minus X and X and X. And now we simply plug those values into uh, the formula, and we say X KB, which is, I think we calculated it to be 5.6 times 10 minus 10, is equal to X squared over 0.05 minus X. And when you solve and uh, work all that out, you should have find first uh, a pOH, or a concentration of hydroxide, and then you change your pOH to a pH, and your final answer should be 8.722. Okay, finally, what happens for this one when we go past the equivalence point? We go just past a little bit. We have 5 millimoles of weak acid, 5.1 millimoles, of, con of the base, of the strong base we're adding to it. Now this time the weak acid is our limiting reactant, so everything goes down by 5. The reactants and the product goes up by 5. But then we have 0.1 of hydroxide left and also have some A-. Now this you're thinking, well, actually this A- could react with water to produce hydroxide, but this A- is what we call a minor species. It's only going to produce a few hydroxides by its reaction with water. And the number of hydroxides that are produced are already present here from this reaction are so great, we don't actually even need to consider the, the hydroxides that are produced when A- reacts with water. At this point, what you can do is simply take the formula pOH equals minus log of hydroxide. The one thing you'll need to do is change the 0.1 to a concentration. So let's go back and look at this for a second. You want to change the 0.1 to a concentration. To do this, you would say, 0.1 divided by that number, and when you do all that, I think you end up with, uh, not, uh, it's 0.1 divided by, the, at this point, there's going to have 101 milliliters. So 0.1 divided by 101, and that gives you the, the concentration of hydroxide, and then you change that to pOH, and then you subtract from 14. And at this point, I think you get 10.996 for your pH at this point. Okay, fine. Let's go back to the initial chart that we had and talk about these four areas. Remember at the very beginning, this point, remember at the very beginning here, this is uh, one type of calculation. This is a Ka. So this is region one. Region two is anything be between the initial, before you start, and the equivalence point. For that, we're going to use a new equation we learned today, which was, is pH equals pKa minus log of A minus over HA. And then you have the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, this is a third type of calculation. You'll have to use what we call a Kd, because you've produced A minus that will react with water. Then finally, after the equivalence point, you've got extra hydroxide, so you simply use a formula to find the pOH. So there you have it. There's really four types of calculations or regions on the curve. The Ka, the what we call buffer region, where you have HA and A minus in between the initial point and equivalence point. The equivalence point, where you have A minus reacting with water and use a Kb, and you have a pOH. So Ka, buffer, Kb, and pOH. So we get a lot of practice on these in class tomorrow. Um, I'm sure we're going to have some questions, but... Uh, We'll, we'll get a lot of time to work on these in class. Thanks and have a good night.